Jill, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending the uh, Economic Development uh, Committee meeting of September 14th. Uh, the meeting is to convene at three o'clock and uh, uh, we'll uh, call the meeting to order at uh, three o'clock. Committee, there are some uh, protocols that uh, have to be done uh, because of our electronic uh, uh, forum today. And uh, it's necessary that I go through this uh, protocol. Today's meeting is held as a virtual meeting due to the declared emergency. In order to keep everyone safe, we're taking this measure to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Although this is a virtual meeting, we'll attempt to record, stream live and publish in accordance to and with Council's electronic recording of meeting policy. Due to the pandemic and the requirement for social distancing to keep you safe, we are not able to allow the public to attend this meeting Normally, by attending an open public meeting of the Municipality of Southwest Middlesex, you are consenting to your image, voice, and or comments being published and recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak may be recorded, and their voice, image, or comments will form part of the live stream and recording process. Today's meeting may be streamed live as well as recorded and published on the Southwest Middlesex YouTube uh, channel. Third item on our agenda are delegations and presentations. Uh, Sheila, my notes indicate uh, there are none and uh, there's no last minute uh, changes at all in that. I, I, in number three, no delegations or presentations. I have none. none. There are none that have come in recently. Thank you, Sheila. We'll move on to number four. Uh, number four uh, committee is uh, the consent agenda. There are two items in that consent agenda. The first are the economic development meetings of February 3rd, 2020. Uh, they haven't circulated. Are there any errors or omissions that uh, the committee has noticed? Seeing none, we will move on to the second item of correspondence. The economic development uh, strategic plan updates, uh, economic development uh, and strategic, Sheila uh, has been uh, uh, the architect of many of this. Uh, and Sheila, before we uh, uh, move on, would you uh, uh, comment on item number two in terms of um, the uh, updates and uh, the significance? Um, well, we've been uh, focusing a lot of our time right now on doing some background policy work while meetings are a little bit more difficult to do with COVID. Um, we feel very fortunate that we've been able to touch many of the top five priorities found in the strategic plan, um, with one being a municipal communication strategy, which was passed by council uh, last meeting, so September 9th. So there's a little bit of work yet to do with that, um, there's a few additional policies to go on with that, and we have some of them in the works at present. Um, that will kind of help give us a little bit more of a face in the community and a little bit of a guideline for all of us to follow as we put information out to the public. Um, another top five priority that we've been able to touch on is the tourism inventory, which you're looking at this afternoon. Um, we've also, um, of course, you know that I have taken the position as of June 1st for the economic development and communication. So that is another top five priority where the funds are to be committed and staff to be committed to the, to the uh, economic undertakings. Uh, one of our next steps, once we get through some of these next few things like the community improvement plan and the new website we are going to be looking at the certified site that is our next step in, the, in that and that, that shows up again in the list of work that we've achieved so far um, so i i feel pretty good that we've touched so many things within the plan in a short period of time okay Thank you, Sheila. Uh, I think you're, you're finished there. I don't want to cut you off. Uh, uh, it's, um, uh, I had the pleasure, uh, committee, of uh, chatting with uh, 
Sheila prior to this meeting. And I was going to say it was a face-to-face -face meeting, but it was a mask-to-mask -mask meeting. We're following all the protocols. And uh, uh, in that chat with Sheila, uh, today you will uh, be enlightened on, of course, many of the things that Sheila has been working on, the staff have been working on. And uh, by its own nature, the, uh, we hope that the Economic Development uh, uh, Committee meeting is a, is a, is a promotional-orientated group of people that uh, are promoting their uh, municipality. So you will hear reports to, uh, in this uh, committee meeting today. And uh, Sheila uh, uh, mentioned to me that uh, perhaps if anything can come out of this, it's our ability to communicate those out to the public. Uh, this committee is the ears and eyes of the community in terms of economic development. You know? So when you hear of something uh, that is a concern to someone or an opportunity that might present itself to move us forward in terms of economic development, we certainly hope that you get that information back to staff so that we can discuss it at future meetings. Uh, that being said, uh, when you leave this meeting today, uh, Sheila and I both agreed, and particularly Sheila, that we hope that you will convey some of the information that you hear at this meeting today out to the public. And uh, it's, it's in so doing, uh, you are promoting your municipality. And uh, uh, it's uh, really the first meeting we've had since uh, the strategic plan, or one of the first, and it's the first, of course, that uh, Sheila has been involved in with her new position and uh, uh, not only uh, introducing her work to the committee, uh, we hope that uh, this committee is a vehicle to spread those messages out into the uh, community. Item number three on the agenda committee is uh, a verbal report on the plan planning no, act. They've been into it for about 10 minutes. What's that? Uh, it's Harold. Harold, he's he's having a hard time hooking on. So, okay. I'm just yeah. talking to Al right now on the. Uh, okay. Um, if someone could text Harold the link, that's all we can do. All right. Yeah. Uh, I I hate to take uh, time off from the chair to do it, but if there's a member of the committee that can uh, forward that to Harold Crothers, we'd appreciate they're it. Going to, they're, they're going to text you the link to make sure you're hooked up to the right link, okay? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think maybe that's that. Maybe that's the trouble. It's, it's the one that was on the email. Okay. Yep. No, uh, I can't do, take away. I don't want to waste your time, committee. Uh, my responsibilities as chair are such that I want to make sure that the time is used efficiently. And uh, I regret that Harold's having difficulty getting on. But if someone can help him out, I would appreciate it. We're moving on to item number three on the consent agenda. Uh, at this point, uh, there's a view verbal report on planning activities. Uh, Jill uh, sends her regrets uh, to the committee for not being able to be with us. She was going to uh, provide this uh, report to you, and uh, she had other business that she had to attend to. It's an extremely important uh, report. Uh, that being said, Sheila is going to try to fill Jill's shoes here to give you an idea of uh, some of the developments uh, that are forthcoming. Uh, there is a, a Butte Street development that she'll be talking about, a South Street uh, development uh, she may be talking about. Uh, there's some properties across from uh, No Frills that are in the development of plans. There is uh, certainly we have an ongoing development in Melbourne and uh, we uh, we hope uh, wards will soon. Sheila, uh, I know you're filling in for uh, Jill here. But I'll hand the floor over to you if you'd like to walk the committee through the consent agenda, item three. Okay, I just have a few very brief notes that might be a little bit of an expansion on what uh, Mayor Allen has said. Um, right now, a lot of the building is complete on Tanya Drive, as most of you are likely aware. So that, I think there might be only one, one or two building lots left down there, and it's uh, really coming along nicely. Um, James Street in Melbourne is another subdivision that's underway at present. Um, they're getting the servicing in and marking out the lots, different things like that. There are some, some, some development going in eventually across from No Frills. There's, um, it's anticipated to be townhomes at this point. Um, we don't know exactly when it will, um, 
when exactly when it will start. They have to work on a bit more paperwork and policies for that. Uh, Wardsville has uh, a building that's actually pretty much headed for com completion at this point. It's a fourplex, I believe, and uh, it's looking very well, very good, very nice structure for the community. It's right on Longwoods Road on the east side of town. Um, as mentioned, there are two larger areas that are be under development at present. Um, and these items, there's additional information on our website on the news page. These are planning applications that are coming to council, I believe, on September 23rd. Uh, South Street, uh, there's an extension to that, and it is, it was basically approved. They're doing a red line amendment right now, and that's what this is really about, to increase the lot widths from 18 meters to 20 meters adjust the road alignment and change stormwater management and it will be about 22 single-family residential units. Um, and then on the southwest end of Glencoe, we are looking at a very large development and this is being undertaken by John Doby and he's looking at creating 144 building lots for single-family detached dwellings, eight lots for 16 semi-detached, and then an area of future de development for townhomes. And those are pretty exciting. We hope to see them go get underway soon. So that, that, that again starts on September 23rd. And then there are a few site plans that they're working on. Um, I think they would have been pretty much done with one of the site plans, but they had a, an amendment to discuss. Uh, the owners wanted to make some slight changes. That's Gyra, Gyra Hills, and they were looking for some agribusiness to start out that, and that's north of Glencoe. And then there's a couple other small site plan agreements that they're just tidying up the paperwork with so, and just getting things completed. And I think that's everything that I have for today for that part. That's great. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, all three wards are seeing development. Uh, we certainly have the, uh, the development in Melbourne that we're, we're enjoying and, uh, and uh, Warsville and uh, Glencoe as well. So it's nice to see that it is dispersed, uh, you know, throughout our municipality. And uh, there will be certainly uh, benefits uh, derived from that. Uh, uh, not just from increasing our revenues of assessment, but uh, it uh, enables uh, a better future for our high schools, uh, our places of worship, our, our business areas, our recreation facilities, and uh, growth is exceptionally. If we want to maintain uh, uh, ourselves as a full-service community and have those amenities that I just mentioned, uh, growth is very important. There is... Uh, no more items on the uh, consent agenda. So if someone uh, would be uh, uh, comfortable... Uh, Mayor, Mayor Allen, Kara yeah. Finn is with us. Oh, yes. Kara, how are you? I see you on your bottom uh, screen there. Yes. Kara, uh, uh, I have you on this agenda for uh, a report uh, in here somewhere. I'm not sure if this, this is the time. I, I don't think you're on the, the docket yet, but... Uh, um, we'll certainly get you. Oh, yes, we have number four, a uh, verbal report on the County of Middlesex. Yes. Kara, I hand the chair over to you. I'm very sorry. You're, you're so tiny down in that corner. I missed you there. Kara, uh, thank you. We've been uh, emailing back and forth a, a few minutes ago, Kara and I, so uh, we've been working hard, both you and I, Kara, haven't we? We have indeed, Mayor, and thank you, Sheila, for the invitation. I'm not going to take a lot of time. Um, Sheila just asked that I pop in on your uh, committee meeting today to talk to you about a few different things that are taking place at the county level just to provide you with some updates. So I uh, mentioned earlier was with respect to community improvement plans, so I just wanted to let you know that uh, things continue across the county in that regard. Uh, Strafford, Caradoc, and Middlesex Centre have both committed to redoing uh, and rewriting their CIPs to extend them 
into other areas except just the downtown, which they were previously designated to. So that work is taking place or has taken place already. North Middlesex and Luke and Bedolf have also both confirmed uh, that they are in the development and we are um, working with them as we plan with you um, to develop new CIPs for both of them. And then uh, Tem Center was actually meeting again today and taking in a report, so we'll get the uh, results of that very soon with respect to whether or not they will be moving forward with the development of a plan this year as well. So lots going on on that front. I bring that to your attention because you're choosing your consultant at this time. Sheila and I have been discussing uh, that and the quotations received. And it's something for you to keep in mind in terms of your request of County Council for 2020. If you develop a CIP at this point, what's the future partnership you would like to see from the county with respect to implementation of those CIPs in the future? So just a question to bring forward to your committee to start to have those discussions. Once you develop it, then what? Um, I also wanted to remind you uh, that the county has been a recipient of what we call a Tourism Relief and Recovery Fund grant. Uh, it was approximately $138,000 that was provided by the county this year in response to COVID relief uh, provided to the tourism sector. What that means is that we have several projects in the works across the county with different partners. And we have a ton of marketing efforts taking place, mostly around the shopping local theme. Um, I have sent out information um, a couple of times, but I just want to remind you as a committee um, and as members of the community that if there are any projects that wish to be undertaken in Southwest Middlesex, we would be open to looking at partnership. And what that looks like is if there are groups that are looking to engage maybe in a potential initiative or new event, it would have to take place between now and December 18th of this year. It's a very tight time frame. Um, but the county has pro been providing some marketing or sponsorship money to different projects. So examples would be uh, Strathroy, Caradoc um, in the BIA, the business improvement area, wanted to do some shop local videos. We're providing some funds for that. Uh, they did some pop-up patios in Strathroy as well in response to uh, the restaurant needs. Uh, we helped to sponsor that. Kamoka Kilworth has a community market. They wanted to extend their hours into um, the Thanksgiving season this year, so we're providing some funds with that. We're in talks with the Donnelly Museum right now about doing the Black Donnelly outdoor uh, event and encouraging people to shop local at that time. So any ideas around that realm, we're trying to get partners to solidify their plans before the end of this month. If, you, if your group or if any community groups that you know of might be able to take advantage of that around that shop local theme, I encourage them to get in touch with me. Um, also, um, as part of those partnering efforts, we have Middlesex Strong Math that we've been giving out. We're going to extend that into a bit of a relief um, uh, recovery uh, kit. So it's going to have a hand sanitizer, a large one. It's going to have the math involved. It's got the Middlesex Strong decals for the windows. Um, all those kind of things in place. So we'll be giving those out, and we have been giving out the masks for the last month or so um, to any businesses that want them, okay, free of charge. So that's available, too. If you want information, just let me know. Our Economic Resiliency Task Force has been uh, operating at the county level since April. Uh, that group is now rolling up uh, next week. Uh, they do have a, uh, a strategic plan uh, that is available on the county's website. We're following that both internally as staff but also as committee members. The next item on the agenda for that group is that we've created a subcommittee for the Economic Development Strategic Plan update for the county. Our plan 
was originally written for 2014 through 2019, um, so we're due for a rewrite. Uh, we have just uh, solidified the consultants. It's MDB Insight, which is the last ones to write our plan, um, so they will be able to transition well into doing the rewrite. Um, so you can expect to see some surveys or stakeholder reach out as part of that. Uh, and that plan will be solidified by December as well. The plan is to bring it to County Council on December 15th. So it can be rolled into the budgetary considerations for 2021. I did want to mention, and Sheila mentioned to you, that one of the things on your agenda for sort of next steps is to look more at your certified site. And the mayor and I had a conversation about your site today, um, ironically. And I just want to put it out there to you that if you do have any plans, we do have partnership money available um, for any business park promotions in the county. So if you had a thought about perhaps wanting to redo some, you know, maybe it's the aerial uh, video or maybe you wanted to put together any kind of other promotional material, video, print, otherwise, uh, we can certainly assist. It could even be signage. Um, and because you are a certified site, you actually are able to also apply for a portion of that money to be uh, reimbursed to you from the province. So things to consider, and I'm always open for questions. If you have ideas, uh, we can see what we can do. But there is money in the 2020 budget still for that. Uh, one of the other projects I had uh, worked with Steve on before, and uh, now that he has moved on to another municipality, I just wanted to remind you of the Heritage Trail signs. There was a plan to um, revamp your Heritage Trail signs throughout the community uh, this year. If you need assistance from the county, we're happy to provide that. I believe I've already provided all of the graphic work for that, but we can certainly assist further if you have any questions and want to proceed. And then lastly, I just want to let you know, the mayor, of course, I know is aware of this, and as is Sheila, uh, but we uh, finished up our business profile series of ads uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, Halid uh, Lab, Emotion Lab, was our feature uh, this year for Southwest Middlesex, and I just wanted to uh, let you know um, that all accounts are that that went extremely well and we'll be very much uh, looking forward to sharing that footage with you. So those uh, videos should be rendered uh, sometime in October. We'll have a launch at the county sometime in the fall. And then that um, photography and videography will be provided to the municipality for its use as well as to the business and all of those uh, funds are provided by the county. So we really appreciate uh, them being involved in our project this year. I think that's it for me. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Kara. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and uh, um, we uh, have received a significant amount of information, uh, both from Sheila and Kara. Uh, if there's any questions, perhaps we can just take a moment to let that digest and uh, forward any questions if uh, any of the members of the committee uh, and, and address them uh, uh, directly to uh, Kara or Sheila. Well, I'll give you a, a few moments to reflect on that and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing some questions. I'll start off, I'll warm up the atmosphere. Uh, Kara, I hope it's not a figment of my imagination, but uh, in this CIP process, one of the reasons Southwest Middlesex uh, wanted to, to uh, initiate this procedure was that some of the costs involved were being shared by the county. Is that right? Or is, yes. If you could expand on that, I'd appreciate it. I just want to, the committee to realize that uh, uh, you know, part of the creed is to advance our municipality, but at the same time we have to be uh, uh, financially uh, uh, viable at the same time. So when the opportunity comes to uh, uh, build up our economic base and improvements, uh, we all know the, uh, the significant costs involved in, uh, in planning. And uh, the county, are, uh, we're very blessed to, to have um, uh, some funds available, and I'll let uh, uh, Kara, expand on that. 
Yes, so as was presented to your committee and council at the beginning of this year, I'm thinking, always the beginning, I don't know, we seem to have lost part of our year this year. Um, but we developed and paid for the cost of having the primer, as we call it, or template for CIPs, which um, sort of led municipalities um, to be able to evaluate whether a community improvement plan would be something they would have interest in, which of course Southwest Middlesex had presented to us that they had interest. And then a request was made uh, to County Council to actually allocate funds out of the existing economic development budget. And this came as a recommendation from the Economic Development Resiliency Task Force. Um, to have our department provide up to 50% of the cost of you actually going ahead and developing your CIP. So that's where we're at at this time. So those uh, funds are limited and they're also time sensitive in that they're part of the 2020 budget. And that's why we've seen so many municipalities come on board with that. Also, of course, the CIPs have become a real source of focus uh, due to COVID um, and the ability of municipalities to react quickly and be able to um, juggle those CIP offerings to perhaps allow for some recovery and relief uh, funding to go to its businesses when they need it most. Um, so that started a bit more attention for CIPs um, lately. So at this time, there is funding available. Um, I do have Southwest Middlesex uh, checked off on my box for when you decide on the consultancy um, that we would provide uh, partial funding to have that completed. And then as I said earlier, um, it's really something for you to put in the back of your mind as committee members and as a member of county council there. Um, to think about what requests you may have for the future. If, in fact, all of these CIPs are developed, uh, what then can the county do as a next step to maybe aid you in the actual implementation? Good. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Kara, for that. And uh, really, uh, if they, I don't want to um, simplify the process, but the CIP is like a tool in the box. It gives us a, a, another tool to uh, uh, use and uh, foster economic development. I want to check my numbering uh, very carefully. I think there's only four items here, and uh, again, thank you, Kara. Uh, I will entertain at this moment uh, a motion that the Council for the, uh, the Committee of the Municipality receive the consent agenda, items 5, 1, 2, 5, 4. If someone would feel comfortable uh, raising their hand, making that motion. Thank you, Mark McGill. And a seconder for that, please. Doug Bartlett, and uh, I can see all your hands, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. Moving on, uh, we're on page three of the agenda, item number 5A. Uh, the subject is branding questionnaire results. Uh, we will uh, hand that over to Sheila, and she can give us that report. Okay. Back in uh, July, I believe it was, we sent out a survey to the members, to council, and to staff, and a few other additional people. We had a very good uh, response rate on that. We were very pleased with the response. What this report is doing is basically summarizing what the comments were, and the we have attached the actual um, the actual feedback that came in. So what we are looking to do is, it, from this, there may be some, some need to um, look at a partial branding at the very least. Um, you, can, you can start very basic. Uh, you can also go, go big with it. They're, they're, limitless, they're a limitless area that you can um, work on with regard to branding it. It's what really sells you as a community to to the world, basically. Um, so, 
I guess it's just open for discussion at this point where what everyone is thinking. Um, okay, uh, I'll just entertain questions uh, from anyone. Uh, just raise your hand. Uh, Look at the chair, and uh, you can address your, uh, as long as I can uh, uh, see that there is, uh, uh, I have three devices blinging here. Uh, yes, I, I would like to see some uh, questions. We're talking about branding. Uh, is there any concerns or questions or inquiries, I should say? I don't see any. I'm going to start it off again then, okay? And uh, this is, uh, can, yes, Sheila, go ahead. I was just thinking that may, maybe, uh Tara might like to add a little bit of information about the um, resident life survey. Okay, that would be uh, an appropriate thing to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tara, can you pick that up? Sure, I can. Um, so, following uh, Sheila's report, I had just um, reminded her that the county had undertaken a resident life survey. Um, we actually did two. We did one in 2016, and then we did a follow-up one at the very, very end of 2018. And actually, we have the raw data from those surveys that I've provided now to Sheila. So I know she shared one of the reports. That was actually the 2016, but I've since sent her the 2018. Uh, the reason why that valid, I think, in terms of you looking at your branding, is that we actually had a really great response. We had 132, I believe, uh, respondents from the local area in Southwest Middlesex commenting on what they loved about the community, how they came to become residents there, how long they had been in the community, what kind of things they were looking for in the future, and what that area really meant to them personally. And so I would think that that would be very valuable information for whomever is going to take on your branding um, process for you. So I've supplied that to her, and I'm sure she could supply that to the group if you were interested in looking at it. Um, but certainly whoever you um, hire or bring on Clyde uh, to take you to the next level would be interested in looking at that to consolidate and take it in, in stride uh, together with all of your comments. Um, I've also provided to Sheila um, a similar branding and resident uh, attraction um, piece that was done by Luke and Bedolf some time ago. So uh, those of you that have been in the county for some time uh, may remember uh, that Luke and Bedolf went through um, quite a, a necessary, at that point, uh, resident attraction uh, marketing uh, and branding process. Uh, that has been very successful since that time. Um, so this is sort of where they were at several years ago, and I've supplied to Sheila all of the background information and the presentation and also the budget um, from that time in case it's of value to your group. Okay. Thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Kara. Again, uh, committee, is there any questions that you'd like to direct towards Kara or Sheila? Uh, Committee, I'm just going to chime in again. Uh, uh, there has been uh, changes over the years. Uh, branding is a word that uh, uh, when I studied at an academic level, it was referred to as marketing, so to speak. And uh, that name quite often is morphed into the word branding in some way. And it, it portrays a picture of your uh, municipality, both uh, verbally and visually as well. And I don't believe in uh, uh, criticism or negative criticism. What I do like to see is self-evaluation. And I think that's a great way to improve yourself, to self-evaluate yourself. So the, the, the uh, comments that I'm going to make, uh, I'm not uh, suggesting at the time they were incorrect or wrong. But uh, to give uh, a very simple evaluation, because I need discussion out of this community, and I, or this committee, and at times I, I, I it's relatively silent, but let's look at the word these words we have right now on our on our water tower and some of our our, uh, uh, our media uh, pieces. Uh, someplace special. At the time, that may have been uh, a very uh, appropriate uh, phraseology to describe Southwest Middlesex. Someplace special, but things have changed. Things are. 
are more competitive today. Uh, they're uh, cleaner, more to the point, and uh, I don't like to use the word, but more aggressive as well. And perhaps someplace special is uh, something out of the Wizard of Oz. It doesn't really refer to uh, a municipality uh, image. And, uh, uh, you know, should we be considering something different and expanding it, something uh, more uh, upfront? I'm giving an example uh, where, uh, you know, someone may say, you appreciate the history, but you also are tuned towards the future. So maybe something like where time and technology meet. Uh, you be the judge of that. Is that stronger? Does that tell you more about the attitude of the municipality? Or do you fall back on some place special? And so that's what I mean in terms of branding. And now this is exactly what I had. I wanted the hands to come up. Phil, go ahead. I saw your hand first. Uh, Phil, you're muted. So if you can unmute yourself, Phil, it would be great. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, okay. I see that uh, Mike uh, might have a comment, too. Okay, so our first question is, uh, what would we do with this branding? Is it, like, can we uh, develop a range of ideas what we might do with it? So water towers is one thing that can go on the logo of our assessment effect. Uh, paperwork um, that can go on our website and, and the taxable information. So that's the first question, I guess. Is, and I, we don't have to answer that right now, but I think we need to think about what we would do with that. Second is, a lot of other municipalities are trying to do the same thing right now, I'm sure. Uh, and like they can, they can bid off and others have their own uh, branding. Um, is it worthwhile taking a look at what at least nearby uh, municipalities already have so we are not um, uh, creating something that's similar to what they've already done? And maybe they'll also generate some ideas for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, good point, Phil. So I'm going to uh, pass that over. Uh, Sheila uh, has put some thought on this, and Kara is extremely familiar with the, the, what the other municipalities are doing in the county. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, when we, if we, if we decide to make a recommendation to council to examine the branding, and that's our function as a committee. Um, uh, how do we use it? Where would it go? And I'm going to let uh, Tara and Sheila uh, take over uh, at this point to see if they could uh, uh, give some uh, response to the, your concerns and your inquiries. Go ahead, Tara or Sheila. Can you address any of those concerns and what other counties are doing or uh, what? Uh, 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 how do you propose to use um, um, uh, slogans and things of this nature, and how important is it? Uh, would you want to address that now or in the future? I don't want to put you on the spot. Oh, I can address it, Sheila. Did you have something you want to offer first? I think the partial answer to the first one is that in our communications policy, we are looking to use, have a, definitely a look and a feel for anything that we put out to the public, uh, including the website, any documents, internal documents and policies. Uh, our vehicles, anything that, I, that we touch will have an identification with. So that's a partial on that. Um, it's, I think it's pretty limitless what you can do. It's choosing what your best thing for the bus is, I guess. And here it's probably good to share that information as well as definitely what has gone on throughout the town. We've just got a lot of experience with that and uh, a lot of information for us there. So the team could very well go and do a bit effective role, particularly from an economic development perspective, is to look at your economic development and your overall obstacle the time for your health before you are particularly in health and decide what is most important, what is the focus. Because Brandon is really all about putting the focus to the marketable. And so that's what the job um, is of uh, not only this group, not only the council, but of course the only one that we will bring on high to be able to take that further. So the reason why there's such a big breadth of scope to what you can do from a minimal perspective, 
I didn't have a dog. I don't do some sort of food or logo or, you know, a quick spoiler on the studio. Versus to live in the market of the brand that actually supports that brand is where we get into the larger dollar values. Because as your app is building up, so I know I'm uh, about what do we do with it now. So it's one thing to have it, it's another thing to figure out how you're going to lose it. So I'll go back to the case of Luke and the doll. At that point, one of their number one goals was to attract new residents to the area. At that time, um, they were not through anywhere near the growth that they have now. And those who really wanted to put it foremost to attract new residents. We're seeing some development pretty much all around the West Valley. There's seeing some development and interest at this time. But if that were known to one of your primary goals, then we want to put that in the back of your mind as we develop that brand and what we plan to do with it. So, that's why there's just such a good broad realm of funds and attention we can place on it. But ultimately, we go into the trouble at this point to put them into a fashion website and all of those things. We want to make sure everything that we have to go along with it is fast and cool and focused um, so that we can bring that uh, excitement um, to your residents and so that we're listening to them as well. So not just as council members and committee members, but a brand guide them to that resident um, for them as well to say, hey, what do people love about, about room here? If that's something we want to return, how do we put that message to other people who might be looking that choice? Or if we want to return on our community. I hope that helps to answer the question, um, but it really is about just not only doing the building boom, if that's all you have money for, then that's a start, and that's a good start. But if you want the plan to go along with it, then we'll have to cook it a little bit further. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mike. Uh, when I said someplace special, are you in love with that, or are you uh, open to change? I'm always open to change, huh? Yeah, um, that's good. But uh, I just wanted, if we were considering a WIS logo and the SWM as well, because yeah. I would I would really like to uh, make sure we keep our real heritage as part of our branding. Um, and I wondered if maybe we could consider a contest note into the community for suggestions to come back to the to the committee with suggestions for branding. That would be good. And uh, Sue and I uh, did talk uh, uh, today as well about that. And Carol will be aware that we have uh, we have a slogan, uh, someplace special, but we also have the socks of wheat, which denote agriculture. And that perhaps uh, is not as problematic as this, our slogan. Uh, uh, that's a very appropriate symbol. Uh, it means a lot. It means our agricultural base. But are we something in addition to that sock of wheat? Uh, that is, uh, as we all are aware on economic development, uh, agriculture is a, is a primary industry. So we must, it's, it's imperative that we have that, uh, that uh, ideology of, of agriculture. But are we more than just agriculture? Uh, we're a riverside municipality. Uh, we have a great uh, heritage in railway. Uh, there are... Um, uh, you know, those are, are two that are numbers to be considered. So, you know, in, can we redefine that to uh, hold on to that uh, that agricultural uh, element, but expand on it in some way? And uh, of course, logos cannot be uh, busy or confusing. They have to be simple and to the point. But uh, that is something uh, we um, um, should be cognizant of. And your suggestion, uh, um, Councilor Soldice, of a contest or something like that is great because it could be people that are far more creative than us on this committee. So uh, it could be uh, something. But uh, anyway, thanks so very much. I'd also like to thank uh, uh, Harold Cotters for joining us. Harold, it's nice to have you there. You came on a little late, but you got your technical problems looked after, it looks like. That's good. Thumbs up. Okay. Good. Good job. You can hear us. See, uh, in closing on this subject of branding, I see uh, uh, I'm just going to perhaps read this recommendation to the committee uh, 
that uh, staff had put out here that uh, the Southwest Middlesex Economic Development Committee recommends that council consider a parcel logo with or without brand message and brand policy and a full branding exercise, logo, message, brand strategy, including a marketing plan. And uh, that's the recommendation by council. Uh, just in addition to that, uh, I, I'm not sure whether it's necessary to feel at this point, but uh, whether or not that council consider that a, that a, a, a contest go out, or draft council can make that recommendation, but I don't want to lose uh, Councilor Solbice's uh, suggestion that uh, perhaps we can have some type of um, competition or something like that uh, in the community. But uh, I want to make uh, very sure that uh, the committee is uh, aware of what they're voting on, that uh, it's not only uh, our logo but um, our, um, our slogan as well, and that we uh, uh, suggest to Council that they, uh, they uh, revisit this and uh, put it on the radar that uh, we would like to do some work on that. Uh, uh, Sheila, any further comments on that before we call the uh, a vote on the recommendation? Um, if somebody with this local is to the, to the recommendation, um, if you want to include that consideration to get into the community contest, that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would like to see that uh, put in. I think uh, um, we've involved uh, the community to a large extent in our surveys and things like that, and the response has been reasonably good for surveys. People are bombarded with surveys. So uh, anything near a 50% participation factor is really, really good. But um, is there any objection that I've been included from anybody? Council Solvice's suggestion. Yes. Uh, Krista, would you like to speak to that? I, I don't have an uh, objection. I just was wondering if we could provide like a cash reward um, for the for the winner, and I wouldn't know what quantity that would be. But then we would get some of our graphic people actually interested because there could be a, a decent amount um, mm -hmm. provided. Good point. Okay, we could uh, say, uh, say that that uh, that uh, the public be invited to uh, submit. Uh, uh, the creative uh, uh, feelings on it, and that uh, they will be judged at a later date, and uh, the winner will receive uh, a prize. We don't have to get down to the specifics. I don't think it's the point of this uh, committee to uh, say what we can give. It can be many things. It can be a guest, or it can be money, or it can be a restaurant voucher, it can be many things. So uh, I think the idea is to uh, uh, enhance that. So uh, I, I think we should. Uh, Sheila, I think we should pick up uh, both uh, Mike's uh, uh, input on that and Chris's input on that in terms of uh, uh, something to be added. And I see a hand up with power. I'm, I'm trying to set these hands on my computer. Rick, go ahead. Uh, Rick, you're on mute. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, I'll go to on Yeah. On your phone there. He's on the phone. Oh. I went to the button. Um, I, think I, think that, I think that if we're going to the trouble to do um, what's been recommended, I agree with both of them. I think that we should make sure that we look into the full brand of exercise as part of the recommendation and not a part of it. Okay, the, uh, there's money involved in that. So that the, there's a set of loans and seals before the I think $500. I don't have it exactly in front of me right now but it goes up to tens of thousands of dollars. So we will have to be cognizant of the amount of money we spend on that. But this will not come without cost, I realize that. So. Well, I just think that it, it defines the goal, that is, that we're doing a whole package. And I, I'm not saying that we have to spend uh, lots of money. I'm not talking about the money. I'm just saying that it's a full exercise. Well, it, it will be, be with us a long time. Sheila, can you interpret uh, uh, Rick's uh, comments uh, and uh, put that into the recommendation? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I've got full clarity on it, but have you? Okay. I think 
The council will make the final decision on this, so I think the way that the, reg the recommendation is gives that allowance to them to go with either a parcel, a small branding exercise, or a full branding exercise, whichever they can budget for. And they may want to consider taking that over and use if they want to go with a larger project. Um, if you went with what's there and added at the end of it, and let the public be invited to submit their ideas with prizes to be considered by council. Something to that effect, would that be satisfactory? I think the spirit of the conversation here, Sula, I think that does uh, nail it. Uh, and uh, we can let, uh, I'm sure all of us have faith in uh, the, um, the uh, Sula's ability to put the synonymous together, but uh, I think uh, it's important. And, uh, of course, uh, one thing, too, it's even color. Uh, you know, I think we would still have with our mom, but I think we're using burgundies and greens and beiges right now. And, and part of the process is even identifying and looking at coloration of, of branding and things of this nature as well. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm not sure when they were adopted. It was some time ago. I know I was in council at the time. They came in, and I submitted pages and pages of information. I, but, uh, uh, it was, uh, and at the time, uh, it was great. Uh, it's been used for many, many years, I think. Probably since around, uh, I think probably since uh, incorporation. So it would probably be uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2001, it may have been adopted. So uh, uh, we've had it for almost 20 years. So, uh, are you comfortable uh, 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 changing that, uh, the wording in that? Uh, recommendation to uh, capture uh, sisters, mics, and uh, what's the uh, feelings on that? Can you see it? Yeah, did I ask me to read it again and then? Sure. Yeah, is, that, is, there move, is there a move it for it? Or? I, I, um, read the motion and then I'll ask if someone to move it. Okay. The Southwest Middle Shop Economic Development Committee recommends that council consider a parcel or full brand of exercise and that the public be invited to submit their ideas the prizes to be considered by council. I think you better go. Okay. Yeah. Mike, go ahead. Is there a concern? Oh, no, I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. Uh, you know. Sister, uh, second now. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, any more discussion? Many? Mm -hmm. All in favor? I have one question. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I missed that one. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. I'll call the board. No, I, I'm sorry. I thought Sarah had a question. Oh, okay. Sarah? Yes, go ahead, Sarah. If you have a question, it's just a comment. Uh, in consideration of the uh, community content, um, I do not actually suggest to you that you want to do that on the slogan side as opposed to on the logo side. Um, just, I know that you can put in the caption to you can to maybe get some of your graphic on this and that thing.
Ну, не надо крутой. Альф. Я открыл ген. Альф, я открыл ген. Альф, я открыл ген. Альф, я открыл ген. Okay, then the spirit of it is the contest, and then I will make sure it's clear of counsel, I'll make sure that, that uh, there has to be some uh, uh, professional influence, and uh, I'm going to reiterate clear of things uh, remarks to counsel uh, when it is brought forward, and uh, still you it uh, very often I, I uh, on hand in that, so I will make sure that... Uh, uh, we do that, uh, but I think uh, I think it takes a little fun and involved with me. Okay, I'll call the question. Uh, I know that uh, we are we have taken the evidence discussion. We know the importance of this. We have got uh, a few uh, uh, input from the um, committee, and we also are aware of the risk that this has to be professional. And uh, Sarah has brought that to our attention. All in favor of the recommendation? All opposed? Good. Thank you very much. See, yeah, we are going to leave the branding discussion at this time. And uh, I think we'll pick it up on the uh, B. Section B is involved. The material is an inventory. Uh, if you could walk us through this, uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what I've done with this report is basically summarize all of the um, responses that we received from the committee on tourism. And of course, this doesn't include absolutely everything that we have. There are other things, but it does kind of give you an idea of the things that we, uh, uh, most of the processes of what we do have. Um, one comment that Sarah made, um, we would be partnering with the county on this, they have a great tourism site that they would allow us to access and promote our, our tourism to, is that we can't, um, we couldn't include any external businesses, but would only be internal businesses that we would be promoting through, the, through their website. Um, so this is basically just a starting step to say that um, we need to start packaging those assets and to gather additional assets to promote to ourselves and to the county. Thank you very much. Uh, when uh, one examines the city's report and the submissions that were made, uh, there's approximately 40 venues of interest uh, that we may market uh, as the people. And uh, for a small municipality such as plus no effect from a quantitative point of view, uh, 40 is a very admirable number, so uh, I think we should all be proud of that, and uh, the exercise uh, uh, was uh, important. Uh, uh, it, uh, it seemed like a very simple request uh, for those submissions, but uh, there was a lot of digging to be done to do 40, and uh, very pleased with that uh, in terms of the numerical sense we can be proud of that. Are there any questions that uh, the committee would like to address uh, to Sheila? Or to, uh, if you have any uh, input, feel free to uh, just raise your hand. Just to go ahead. So there's a little question. I just noticed, um, I didn't really see the word house on there. And I know in the past they themselves have advertised in the big cover in an effort to get people out to their shop and, and their store and things like that. Um, I don't own two shops, that's two shops. So um, I wasn't mm -hmm. sure if that would be included as well. Yeah, it, it, it is. There are some remarks that we have to be careful of promoting individual businesses, but by all means, I think that there could be a section of uh, retail interest, and, and uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, is important uh, to make sure that those are there. Yeah, um, do you have any concern about that or clarification on that? Not a concern, but I think one of our first steps would probably be reaching out to all the businesses and encourage them, them to submit their information and anything that they would like to do mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, been, it's funny how things overlap here as well. We've got that, uh, that, uh, uh, that information that was uh, generated for uh, uh, community response. Uh, Calling uh, when uh, during the COVID exercises that uh, uh, Chris and the fire chief of the Senate are doing, uh, there is uh, a significant amount of data in there on all businesses in Southwest Midwest, 
and uh, it identifies them, it's got contact information, and it also has, a, I think, a, a booth. Uh, you can always put a booth uh, um, bio as to what uh, they're all about, and uh, uh, sales uh, business uh, would be a fun example of that, that, uh, uh, you know, that type of model should be uh, 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 you know, put forth in, in uh, a, a section of that that uh, relates to our, uh, our business inventory as well. Uh, we have a tourist inventory, we must have a business inventory. And I think that that is where we are someplace special, is that many communities of our size do not have the business uh, community that we have. And uh, I can uh, give you examples of that. Uh, you know, Mount Bridges even uh, is uh, a very uh, popular uh, area, but uh, uh, in terms of the original old Mount Bridges is somewhat uh, uh, small in terms of the business uh, uh, footprint. Uh, so we were for our size, so we have a reasonably good news to address. Uh, Mike, go ahead. I see your hand there. Thank you, Dan. I think just a quick comment. I just wanted to see if we could uh, consider adding the W. Campbell Conservation Area to our list of tours and inventory as part of the park is located in Southwest Middle Yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can uh, certainly take that into consideration. Still, we need to probably make some minutes and, and all the at the same time here. So we'll make sure that Mike's uh, concern is there. And I think uh, Jerry Hills are already on the list there. And I'm sure Holton Phil's business is on the list there. Cause that's, uh, and uh, Tara, I see your hand up there. And I appreciate your participation. Go ahead. And I just wanted to ask, what is the response to the life of the public staff to your parents? Uh, 
uh, young family moving on and all that uh, they can do. And uh, I'm sure that the same time is we want to know where they can go. And uh, this is uh, the, the goal of the They're the part of it. So uh, that's, uh, that's fine. Okay? I think we've got that deep to death. Okay? Uh, see what this, uh, the piston paper is? Uh, is the, um, we, need a, we need to move this uh, uh, recommendation? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's before you cancel uh, that the Economic Development Committee recommends the Southwest Middlesex Council that the tiers and assets of Southwest Middlesex be packaged into the experiences and promote them through various means and mechanisms within the municipality and through Middlesex County Tourism. Uh, that, uh, that's a very good recommendation in the sense that it uh, is uh, somewhat ambiguous. It gives us a lot of parameters to use, and it has not forgot the uh, tourism put there on how Middlesex uh, County Tourism can help us. So uh, I think the recommendation is uh, exceptionally well worded. Can I have someone move that? I'll move that out. Okay, thanks very much, Dennis. Uh, second to that. Uh, Councilor Soldis, any further questions? All in favor? Third. Uh, opposed? Seeing none. We will uh, put that forth that recommendation to uh, the Council of Southwest Minnesota. Uh, new business, uh, CLA, number six on our agenda. No items were removed from the consent agenda. I don't believe there's any other business at this point. I will say, uh, is there any uh, comments or concerns? Uh, Mark McGill has his hand up first, followed by Doug Bartlett. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, um, I just we all know that I see the of that. The broadband is, is really important. The any type of economic development, and especially now, even more so now, when there's so many people working from home, and businesses need it too. And um, there's a side of the line from Mount Bridges coming down to Glencoe. And at this time, we're not sure that Appen can be hooked into that. So I called Martin if not, and the office about that. And actually, just, just before this meeting started, about 15 minutes before the service meeting started, Monty actually called me, and um, he said they're still working on that. I mentioned the open situation soon, and he and I talked about uh, the announcement from last week that I believe there's something like the province has committed another $16 million, 10 point some odd million dollars to Middlesex, and so there's six million for Elgin County to uh, increase the amount of broadband internet in, in the Middlesex and Elgin County. So this is something that um, the province is, is willing to help with and it is really important to this area. No, I agree, and uh, Martha, thank you for your efforts there. I think, uh, you know, uh, not to make light of it, but the squeaky wheel disagrees, so we've all heard that saying in the past, and I think we have to continually uh, uh, mention uh, uh, to both government and the private sector as well that are doing this. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, no thought in that. Uh, they're putting that five drop to go in that company. Uh, it's... Uh, but the cost of rural internet in the, is extremely expensive. Uh, I think uh, uh, there's numbers, various numbers are going to bounce, but it can be as little as uh, $500 for a connection in a, urban, a large urban area. And that same connection to a rural resident can be like $15,000 for one connection. So it's, uh, it's really... Uh, 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 talking things to the optic and uh, we, we're sure that the broadband is going to be the way to go. And I can assure you also, as a, as a representative of everyone on county council, this is a subject that is discussed uh, regularly, and uh, it is on the radar of county council, and uh, they are uh, very aggressive. Uh, and in fact, it has been said that if uh, we cannot find a good provider for the middle size county, Minnesota County will be the own provider of it if they have to. And uh, we're working uh, with uh, several companies throughout the county to make sure that we maximize the use. Just to go ahead. Um, yeah? one, one of the things, just to follow up on what you were saying, um, 